What is good, guys? Welcome back, Crusaders and Pillagers, to another episode of Team COG here. Today, we're going to be showcasing you guys a deck profile, uh, the Zexal Ascended, or the Ascended Sages, or like the Utopia deck. I don't know what the entire... I would love for it to be called Zexal, but Zexal's banned for good reasons, too. But anyway, guys, uh, this is going to be my list that I'm testing right now. Uh, this deck, so like the best way I can describe this deck, as I described through the local Crusade episode, is that this deck is half full now. If it's like a glass of water, it's half full. And then when we get Leo Ray, Utopia Leo Ray, it becomes full. And then once we get like Utopia Dragnar, it becomes like overflowing. Like it's the amount of like power that this deck will have then is through the roof. So anyway, we're just going to quickly jump into it. Uh, please remember guys, if you guys want to help support the channel, you can do so by doing a few things. Check out the TCG player affiliate link down below. Remember, it doesn't cost you nothing, just puts back into the channel. And then on top of that, guys, if you guys want to help support the channel, think about hitting that join button and becoming a member. That is the best way you can do it. Get perks and rewards while directly supporting the channel. And then on top of that, guys, the Discord down below is open to everybody. So go ahead and click that link down below. But join a Discord, join our Order of Crusaders, and let's take it to the meta. And finally, if you guys enjoy this mat that you're seeing right here on screen, uh, please check out the Team COG store, which is linked down below to get your merch today. We are actually in the works of another summertime play mat, which I think a lot of people will enjoy. It follows around my best-selling playmat, Ordained by Flame. So there's a little spoiler for it. Uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the deck profile. Uh, so to start off with, guys, you are playing Triple Ascend Sage. Uh, this card is phenomenal. Like, I really cannot tell you. Like, there's a reason why this card is super expensive. And if you did not get it for, like, $5.36 when it dropped, shame on you. But that's what I got it for. This card is just remarkable. So this is a new card. I'll explain it. It says if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card. And if this card is used as an XYZ material for the summon of a Utopia monster, it gets the effect to search of one normal rank up spell card, uh, which that is crazy. And especially when we get the new rank up, it is just going to be phenomenal. But uh, you play three of it. I've seen people talk about playing it at less than three. I don't think that is correct. I think these cards are superior extenders and start. Well, it's technically the starter because uh, it completes one half of an XYZ summon for you. So uh ascended sage is definitely a starter it's like a, one of the best starters that you have but to kind of go in tangent with the ascend sage we're rocking triple armored sage uh very similar to ascended sage but uh, the armored armed sage says that you just must control one level four monster then you can special summon it and then if it is used as material in the summon of a utopia monster uh, it gets the ability to add you a Zexal Arms card from the deck to your hand, which, of course, there's plethora of them. I am playing. I was not able to get a hold of Tornado Bringer or a Lightning Blade, so I'll show you the two that I'm playing, and the two that I'm playing are extenders uh, when we get Leo, Leo Utopia Leo Ray. So until we get Leo Ray, they don't do much of anything, but they still proc the effect of the Dragonic Utopia to equip from the deck. So, I mean, at the end of the day, they're still doing the same thing, but once we get the new cards, it'll be pretty good. Trust me, guys. I'm on to something with this. But, yep, yeah, this is it for your Sages. Uh, the the six sages. I wish there was more good sages. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, but hands down, like you always want to see ascended, because uh, otherwise, if you don't see ascended, you go through like Utopia Double and Utopia Dobia, do, 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 Utopia Double can get you where you need to go. But you really want to see that rank up spell, especially in tandem with Change Tactics, so you can just draw and draw and draw. Uh, but yep, that is it for the three sages. Uh, there are like some pretty interesting combos that involve them, like two card combo, like a two card sage right now can get you to a, Utop a Dragonic Utopia with a Pegasus equipped. Uh, but in the future, it's going to get you to a Leo Ray and a Giant Hand, which is a lot better. So two cards get you two disruptions, which of course, when you look in the aspect of combo decks, when I look at it, uh, unless like you're if you unless if you use your entire hand to make a and to make a board, you better have almost infinite negates. Uh, however, after that, it's like every card in your hand I want to see make negates. So if you have two cards putting out equal negates or plus one negates, you're doing pretty good. That's a good combo, and we get that way when we get the new stuff. But anyway. Uh, that is it for the sages they're they're 100 like these cards are just so cool looking like a sin sage is like by far one of my favorite cards i released in lightning overdrive but moving on uh for the supplement engine since there's not enough sages to play uh we are rocking the anamont engine which i believe not only thematically fits with utopia but i think it's the best rank four engine you can play uh utopic onomatopoeia this card always counts as a gaga -ga -ga, do 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 go go the, the baby language deck that's that's what he always counts as and then on, he's not on summon effect. You can activate the effect, special summon any number of Gaga, well, one Gaga, one Dodo, -do, one Zubat, you know, any of those, one each from your hand and defense position. So this is like the best normal summon in the deck because it can completely flood the field. Now, yes, you do kind of dwell into the range of Nibiru there, but that's okay because Nibiru is not prominent in the meta yet. Uh, but this card is just, frontal. it's treated as all those, so it fulfills requirements for glove and dwarf and stuff like, or excuse me, dwarf and coat. So it like, it fulfills those requirements pretty easy. Uh, on top of that, people, like, so, like, this card's actually pretty crazy. Uh, if you, they do imperm this or effect rate of this, 
coat can summon from the hand so it's almost like it does nothing but this is like the best normal summon in the deck by normal summoning this you're just able to flood the hand and you have multiple ways to get like more of the gaga and dodo names to your hand so like your normal summon is like three monsters so uh, that is it for him then we are rocking i'll just go through them triple coat and then triple dwarf uh, i have seen some builds play true dwarf and i uh, let me hit you with why i don't think that is correct dwarf is you want to pitch dwarf with onomatopoeia so you want to have the, the the ability to see those two in tangent quite frequently if you are not able to see that this card is also the next best normal summon because this card can also norm, uh, special summon from the hand coat so and also utopic but you don't worry about that because you normally utopic anyway but this card is an additional starter. It's probably the second best normal summon in the deck, simply because if you don't see this, you can still normal this and use Zubancho to summon its, and use, use its effect to summon the coat. Now, something very interesting is that these guys are kind of opposite of each other. Uh, if you control a Zubaba or Gaga monster, except Zubaba, Rancho, and Gaga coat, you can special summon this card from your hand. That's where the Anamana comes in. Since he's treated as all of them, you, control, you can special this guy from your hand. And then he can reborn a Dododo or Gogo -Go from the graveyard. Now, then, just like as he does that, uh, Dodo and Go Dododo Dwarf here. God, the, the names are getting me, guys. The Dwarf here allows you to, um, if you control a Dododo or Gogo -Go -Go monster, and this card's in your graveyard, you can special summon it. And then he can special from hand. So they're kind of like opposites, you know. Uh, very well designed, if you ask me. But you always want to pitch glove. Off of Automata Para, and Glove is the next best normal summon outside of the Utopic one. So, uh, hands down, I think you should play three. I don't think you should play less. But anyway, moving on. One Fefnir Sword, one Ashura Strike, and one Twin Sabers. So, some people, so let's, let's just talk about this card real quick since it's new. Uh, this card is remarkable. This does not activate. It is a just a monster effect negation that can interrupt chain links that doesn't activate. Just on resolution, you choose a monster effect and a chain link, or just choose a monster effect and negate it. Has to be on field though. Konami, you really messed up if you would just say any monster effect, you would give this deck a chance against cards like the rock, but you did not. So another interesting thing is if this card is equipped by its own effect or by an, like another like equip spell, which I don't know if it does that, if there's cards that do that, but if it's equipped by its own effect and they dark rule no more you, that is fine because this card will stay equipped because it's equipped by its effect. However, if you do have it equipped by like when the new Leo Ray comes out or uh, Dragonic Utopia has this equipped, if they do dark ruler, uh, this does fall off, uh, but that is just interesting. But the combo that this deck has, especially, I'll go ahead and talk about it real quick since you guys are wondering, because probably wondering because of these two cards. Uh, when you, Leo Ray just says on summon, detach, or not even on summon, it's detach equipped a uh, Dexel weapon. All right. Uh, so the play is that what you do is uh, you use the two sages, use armor sage to search Fefnir, make Utopia, search your rank up, search your, fin search your, search your Fefnir. Detach off a Utopia Ray, or the Leo Utopia Ray, equip the Ashura Shield, and then you normal summon Fefnir. Fefnir will then special the Ashura Strike. Then you just overlay them both, and there you have your second rank four. Uh, that will be when we get them in Brothers of Legend coming out, but that is it for the Zexal Weapons. Uh, continuing on, we are rocking Triple Ash Blossom. Uh, this deck draws a lot. Like, I mean, a lot. it can draw a lot, and it searches a lot, so this is just a powerful hand that you can draw into. You know, I'm, so like, I've actually thought about cutting Ash and playing a two Time Thief Winder and one Retrograde, and then have my ending board consist of ending on Redoer plus a Counter Trap to stop those blowout cards, but I mean, Ash works pretty well. And you also have cards that can put back additional Ashes, so if you open two Ashes, you have like Zexal Construction that can put back the Ash, and while keeping the other one, you know, so it's pretty decent. I'm uh, moving on. This card right here is XYZ Change Tactics. Uh, if, whenever you summon a Utopia monster, pay 500, draw a card. You can draw eight times a turn. In fact, you can actually have your entire hand be completely in a gate interrupted. As long as you start to resolve that Utopia and you go up the Utopia line, you can draw five cards and be right back in the game. But yep, and it's searchable off of Generation Force, but you just want to see it. I mean, it's, it's draw. Why not? A uh, way to play around the rock, I guess, since I have it here, would be that you would practically use your sages, start climbing up the Utopia route, and then eventually once you reach your fifth summon, the opponent more than likely is just going to rock you, and then you follow up with your normal summon of Anomat, and then you just combo off that way. That would be a pretty good, because uh, uh, Utop like the three baby language cards, uh, Utopic, and then Ano, and then Zubaba, and Dododo, they're two rank fours in themselves, so, which is really decent. Uh, three is Exile Construction. Uh, so this card right here just says reveal any card from your hand, 
Shuffle it back and add a Zexal Weapon, Zexal Sage, Zexal Spell or Trap, rank up magic, rank down magic. Uh, this card is remarkable. I wish it didn't I wish it didn't like allow you to shuffle back. I wish I let you keep the card, because that would make it a plus one, and that's really what like this deck needs. But I mean it is fair. Hands down, can't complain. Uh moving on, the Anomonato Pair. So this card is what the card you want to pair with Glove or the Dwarf, whichever you prefer to call it. I'm just struggling with the names in general, but uh, so this card right here just says discard one card, add one Zubaba, one Gaga, or one Dodo. So you get to add two of one of each, if that makes sense. No, that's, that's a horrible way to explain it. Darn English. So you discard one card. You can add one Zubaba, one Gaga, one Go. You can add any iteration of any of the four baby language cards, for the lack of better terms. Uh, you're just pitching. The goal is to pitch Dwarf, add Coat, and add Onom Utopic Onomana because he is counted as all four. Uh, so pretty much to sum it up make it simplified i'm not going to sit here and struggle for five minutes on it but uh, we're rocking two generation force this card says if you control an xyz monster search an xyz card so you can search chain tactics and xyz import which is really good uh, for the rank ups we're rocking two zexal force and one rank up quick chaos so this card is searchable through zexal construction and then this card is searchable through your Sage and also Construction. Uh, this card is very interesting. I uh, do take note there is some effects that you got to take note of. When you activate this card, you do not have the choice. It's not you can. You must take a Zexal weapon from your deck and stack it to the top of the deck. And that, that's just kind of... I didn't I didn't like that. I thought I could just activate this rank up, draw a card off of Change Tactics, and then banish this if my life points are 2,000 different, and draw another card. But it just practically guarantees like you're going to get a Zexal weapon, which is not bad, but I'd, I'd like for that to have been an option instead of a, you know, a needed or like required... But, yep, so this card lets you just rank up your Utopias by one level and or into a Utopia or Zexal weapon. So you can go into Draconic Halberd or Leo Arms if you play it. And then uh, if your life points are 2,000 different than your opponent, you banish this card and draw a card. And then, of course, Quick Chaos is what allows you to target one number monster and rank it up into one rank higher. Sea uh, Monster, which I'll show you guys the extra deck. Uh, you turn Giant Hand into Red Giant Hand, so practically you get three interruptions uh, minimum right now with the combo. But I wish, this, I wish uh, Sage could search this card, but sadly it can't. So you either got to hard open, hard draw it, or excuse me, hard open it, draw it off of the change tactics, or um, search it with Zexal Construction, which, I mean, it is searchable, so you might as well play it. And especially since you search this with Sage, and then you can search this card, uh, you have two rank ups, so you can make your Draconic, and then you can, like, go off on the Giant Hand and, like, do some funny things that way. Uh, one Onomata to pick up. Uh, this card here just says add any Onomata card from your deck to your hand, so it's a fourth copy of Utopic Onomata Pia, and it's a fourth copy of Onomata Para. Uh, you could potentially cut it, I, it re really, honestly, you probably could uh, just probably either play another import or something like that. But I, I like the ability to have four copies of Automata Para because that is like the best card, one of the best cards you can get. Uh, one Monster Reborn and one Zexal and Trust. Uh, this card practically just says target Utopia or a Zexal Weapon or a Zexal Sage, summon it. And then if your life points are 2,000 different, you can add a Zexal Spell or Trap, I believe. You can bench this card from your guitar one Zexal Spell or Trap in your graveyard, except and Trust, add it back to your hand. Uh, so, I mean, not too bad. It's a searchable Monster Reborn because it has Zexal in the name, so you can search it with Halbrid, you can search it with Zexal Construct. Uh, you just have multiple ways to get to it, so it's pretty pretty handy. Uh, moving on to Double or Nothing, Import, and Call by the Grave. Engine requirement because Utopia Double is just straight nuts in this deck, and it gives you free discard fodder for your Automonoto Para if you don't open Glove. And then Import is searchable if you already open XYZ Change Tactics, but you open Generation Force with it. You can use this to grab Import. Import is just a settable disruption that you can use to equip any monster that is special summoned that's attack is less than your XYZ monster to it as a material. So if you really think about it, if you have room for Zeus or you play Zeus and you play multiple of these, you're just going to be able to, you can almost like guarantee to give your Zeus like one more, uh, you know, one more detached material. So like you can, you can get pretty good. But that is it for the main deck, guys. Moving on to the extra deck. Uh, it would not be a Utopia deck without Rock and Utopia. Uh, now, believe it or not, you can probably cut this down and play two Utopias and then two doubles. Uh, it's just right now with we're lacking cards because Konami. Uh, we are trying to play three of it because, like, even at the very end of the day, you can potentially OTK with uh, double or nothing. You just have to have the Utopia to negate the attack with it. So it's just kind of good to have all the, mon you know, three of them, three of them things. But yeah, triple Utopia. I, like I said, you could probably get away with two. It may be one in the future, but I don't know if I'd ever play just one because it is a Utopia deck. But we are rocking number 39, Numero 39, Double Utopia. Uh, so this is Utopia Double. Again, I ordered a Spanish one, not an English one. Uh, you should probably play two of this, but if you play two, you have to you have to play two 
double or nothing and you don't want to play double or nothing because it is a brick uh so the one is good enough this card is like the first card you always go into uh, just because you can immediately rank it up into uh not really rank up but special summon on top of it your draconic utopia if you need to to allow you to play under um the rock if you if you need to but this card's really good it lets you just you know you you use this with the sages you get rank up zexal weapon then you detach this grab yourself double or nothing go up into draconic and then there you go a 1c 39 utopia ray this is just another utopia you can smack onto a normal utopia so like it's just practically it's just here to give xyz change tactic draws uh, we are not playing the shining the space is too tight and i found like a lot of problems with this deck is people get wrapped up in the draw aspect of change tactics and they just draw 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 and they just practically are just drawing cards because half the cards they're drawing they've already used so their hands just full of useless cards so i'd rather draw five cards or three to five cards end on a decent board than end on a crap board and draw 20 i mean you know it just makes no sense but this card just is like a stepping stone to allow you to draw into more cards with change tactics and then the lightning uh, the lightning here is essentially one of the final pieces you end on in some of your combo lines. Uh, though he doesn't do much except during the battle phase, he is a threat that you can potentially, that will, I mean, it solves any card. I mean, hate to say it. I mean, like, you attack into Dragoon, effect, they can't respond to it, you plow over Dragoon. Uh, that one, the new card, that Ignister card, battle phase, swing, not really new, but the Ignister's tower card, you know, swing, effect, 5,000 beat over. You know, like, hey, you got to put respect behind Lightning. This card definitely earned its uh, earned its place. You got to respect Lightning. But it's also a Utopia card, so when you smack it on top, you draw a card. Number C39, Utopia Ray. This card is actually quite crazy. You can rank this when you're going second. You rank this guy on top of something, detach, pop a card, burn for the attack, and then you can push for lethal pretty easy. Especially if they rock you. One of my favorite things is when... Uh, in testing, I've had like I was going second. The guy rocked me when going second because his board wasn't that great. So I just was able to normal summon my Anamot because I held off long enough because I just had these extra weapons. So I made another rank four, did my shenanigans, turned Utopia into um, or used my rank up Zexal Force, turning into Utopia Ray. Then I used Ray's effect, detaching a Utopia monster, targeting the rock, burning for three, swinging for three uh, 56, and then that was like. Come on, like that. It's crazy. This card just is really good in time as well. It's probably the best Utopia. As far as artwork goes, I like Utopia Ray V's artwork, but Ray V just does it. Well, this is Ray V. Utopia Ray Victory. I but however Ray V just does better. I, I wish they had switched the artworks personally. Uh Ultimate Draconic Utopia Ray. So let me get you this card's effect. Click effect. It becomes targeted for an attack or an effect. Any effect, your effect, my effect. Equip this excellent weapon from the deck to it. So that's the best effect. Uh, because you're able to grab Pegasus. And that's it. Practice and then the second effect is once per turn, detach a card. Target monsters up to the number of Zexal weapons that are equipped to this card and negate their effects. Konami, if that was a quick effect, that'd have been pretty good. Well, it's ridiculous. I this card's outside the artwork, this card's cool. It allows you to equip from the deck, but I could almost see once Ray comes out, Leo Ray just cutting this completely. Just getting rid of it completely because you just have cards that do things better. Ray's a quick effect. Ray gets you, Ray doesn't have to like make you target it with an effect. It gets one directly from the deck already. But anyway, it's the best that we got now. So this is the card that we're trying to end on constantly because it does allow you to equip the Pegasus Savers and Pegasus Saver does negate uh, cards, which is good. Number 99, Utopic Dragon. Uh, this card is decent. Uh, once we get number 99, Utopic Dragnar, it'll be better. Uh, this will probably replace it. But right now, this card is actually, like I said, pretty decent. Uh, you can summon it on top of any Utopia by pitching a, you know, a equip sp or a rank up spell. So you equip like an extra Zexal, rank up Zexal. You draw a card, you summon it, and then it can Monster Reborn back like any of your Utopias, and then you can start like Utopia climbing on top of that to draw more cards. And then more, and like I wouldn't say more importantly, uh, it does have the ability to, if something targets it, you can detach and like negate the target, negate the effect, and destroy it. So it does have like a little bit of slight protection, and a lot of things in the game target more than you think. So, like, if they try to solve this with, like, Cerberus, Unicorn, uh, you can just detach and stop those type of effects. Or, like, other effects. However, like, you know, certain powerful cards don't target, like, Access Code and Dragoon. Uh, you're just forced to just kind of just suck it up and lose after that. But anyway, uh, it's just a pretty good option. Again, it's, a, like, real easy to summon. It's a 4,000 monster that you can just smack down and then just, like, apply a lot of pressure. So, like, if you do end up breaking up into, like, a Utopia Ray and then you use the effect pop something and then you can pitch it and then you smack on top of this dragonic so you've burned them for something and you're gonna hit them for four plus like another monster it's pretty it's pretty decent not gonna lie i'm uh, moving on giant hand and then 
giant red hand. Uh, the entire combo line is you're ending on red hand plus like something. So you end on giant hand, use its effect, detach, and then once they like they start to do a little. Once you get to like more of an open game state, you chain the uh, rank up magic, click chaos, turning it into the giant red hand. And red hand is just a omnian effect, uh, just like. Let me read to you. Once returned in either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated, detach one exclamation hero from this card, and if you do, negate the effects of all face-up cards currently on the field to the end of turn. So it's a mass, a mass wipeout, which is really cool. Uh, so it's just, you know, another, it's a third interruption you can add, uh, especially like, you're probably going to use your Pegasus Sabres, then this, and then you can rank up into this, and then detach, uh, which is really cool. But, yep, uh, that's something that this deck can do. One Dweller, not much to say. Tornado Dragon, Dugaris. And this card's actually crazy. You actually need Dugaris because sometimes you have to dig for that XYZ change tactics. And then also on top of that, there's like some combo lines where like you can like uh, detach Monster Reborn and then rank him up into Halberd. Halberd to get you a search for like Zexal Entrust. And then you can make like uh, Utopia, Dragonic Utopia with a Pegasus that's like a 5,000 or 6,000 like beat stick. And then you're able to get to like another rank four of your choice, whether it be Tornado, Dweller, or Giant Hand. Uh, so Dugaris is pretty necessary right now, in my opinion. And then finally, the Zexal Weapon, Dragonic Halberd, Detach, Search your Zexal Weapon, uh, Zexal Spell or Trap card from your deck, and then it can use its effect to equip to a, a Utopia monster and it gains 3,000 attack. And then it's like if it battles or destroys once by battle, it can summon all those Utopia or all those Zexal weapons, which is pretty cool, but it doesn't really come up. But anyway, guys, so that is it for the profile. Please stay tuned for a combo video because this deck does have some pretty cool one and two card combos for what the deck does now when we get the future support, as I've said and preached this entire video and I'm not really preached, but complained about, uh, the deck will have like more powerful combos. But yep, stay tuned for that, guys. Uh, nothing more can be said, but please remember, stay safe, stay healthy. This is Charles from Team COG signing out.